this is the auto sorter that help to sort the books from the fixed book drop as well as the mobile book drop into different category. Hi, I'm Joshua Lim. You're watching The Library Report, a series where we explore the illuminating stories and colourful characters found within and beyond our libraries and archives. In this episode, we answer your burning questions about the innovative technologies used at our libraries. Hello, my name is Moi. I'm the IT Specialist with the National Library Board and today I'll be answering some of the questions that you may have. Let's begin. How did you get into this line of work? After my graduation, I started by following the majority of my classmates and joined the computing discipline. I joined NLB in year 2000. After being uh, with the company for two decades, my boss said that I'm actually part of the furniture. What does an IT Specialist do? My job is to handle IT operation in NLB. I help with the new libraries with the IT setup, oversee the library management system, and rolling out of the automated service in the library. The automated service are something that patient won't see, but it's very essential for the IT services at the back end. What is a day in your life like? Hmm. Well, my day will start as early as 8 in the morning and there will be meetings after meetings. Talking to my team to set the goals, what they're supposed to achieve, talks to the management to set the, the targets for the division to strive towards as well as talking to vendors to see what are the new initiatives that we can bring values to NLB. How many robots does it take to run a public library? We have various uh, automation in the library. There are automation that helps to return the books, scan the books so that we know where the books are supposed to go to and we also have the uh, robots to actually scan the shelf. Let me bring you to some of the robots that we have at Templin's Regional Library. This is the mobile book drop. Since the fixed book drop is at the other side of the library, the main function of this mobile book drop is to allow patrons to return the books before borrowing the new ones. This automation or robot will carry the books back to where it's supposed to be so that it can replace the books back to the shelf. This is the auto sorter that helps to sort the books from the fixed book drop as well as the mobile book drop into different category so that staff just need to move the bins and put the books into the shelf directly. This is the shelf reading robot. The main function is to scan the books that are sitting on the shelf. But what it helps the staff is that it allows staff to just go to those shelves without a place books and put them back where it's supposed to be. How do you decide which library process to streamline? That's a very good question. Typically, when we come to automation, we look at what are the most time-consuming jobs that the staff have to embark. And we will try to reinvent the process to make it more productive. For example, we notice that the sorting of books has been a, a repetitive job for the staff and we uh, came up with this auto-sorter to automate it so that staff can spend their time in other areas. How did the public respond to the role of such innovation? There are many signs that the public really enjoy this because they came deliberate to the library just to see those automation in action. There are scenarios where patrons just borrow books to see those automation in action and these are quite encouraging for us. How high techs are the robots used in the library? I must say that we are pretty high tech and we prepared to make it even better. I remember when Chachukang Public Library was closed for renovation. We actually brought this book dispenser to the shopping mall where the library was closed. The main function of the book dispenser is like a vending machine that carries about 300 titles that allow Chachukang residents to continue to enjoy borrowing of books while the libraries are closed. Currently, we are in the process of transiting from the current high-frequency system HF to the ultra-high-frequency system UHF in short. The best analogy is the transition of our mobile phone from 4G to 5G. With UHF, the robots can do much more. For example, if a book is misplaced that it cannot be detected by human eye, UHF in the robots can help to detect that easily. Has a robot malfunctioned before? Once, the shell ring robots fell off the stairs. The library staff came back in the following morning, found that the robot was lying on the ground, as if like it's shouting out, help me! the librarian have to step in to solve the issues. 
this is a good instance that even though with automation where they are clever device, they are not, still not smart enough to overcome situations like this. And that's where a warm body intervention is required. Do you think libraries will be completely run by robots in the future? Honestly, I don't think you can take library stuff away from the library. Library is no longer just a place for library users to walk in, borrow books and walk away. Library is also a place for the community to gather and to interact with each other as well as to study in peace. We have also set up study zone in the library so that it offers a conducive space for public to actually study in. We also organise programmes and events so the public can participate. And I think these are the human touch that we cannot replace it with automation. If you could automate something in your life, what would it be? I have started automating my house into a smart home, like introducing smart switch to turn on the lights and the power so that you don't have to do it physically. My hope is to automate things as much as possible so that we can free out from those repetitive tasks and we can focus on other areas in life. What is the most challenging part about your job? In IT line, uh, changes are constant and as a result, when there's an unplanned event and libraries are operating seven days a week, IT staff have to work over the weekends just to cope with the change. What are your hobbies outside of work? Well, to be honest, I don't really have a hobby and I try to spend as much time as possible with my family. But if really time permits, I would like to pick up more handyman skill, like for example, replacing a basin. What would you say to someone who is interested in joining the field of IT? But I say just stick to it because IT is more relevant than ever and I think now people are more open to joining IT. So just go for it. That's all the questions we have for today. Thank you for watching this episode of The Library Report. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below or comment to let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.